Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Horror Mine, where we talk about mysteries, thrillers, and horror movies. My name is Vic Shy, and this week, my friends, I'll be going over the newly released James Wan horror film, Malignant. Malignant tells the story of Madison Mitchell, portrayed by Annabelle Wallace. Madison is being haunted by terrifying visions of real-life murders being committed by a mysterious entity from her past called Gabriel. Malignant is the 10th film from brilliant horror director James Wan, and let me tell you, it is absolutely insane. I'll be going over the events that take place throughout the film and explaining that crazy-ass ending that will probably catch some people off guard. This video will contain spoilers for Malignant, which is currently playing in theaters and streaming on HBO Max. If you enjoy this video, make sure to click that like button as it really helps the channel and I truly appreciate it. But without further ado, sit back and relax and join me as we explore the mysterious and bloody world of Malignant. Our movie begins in 1993 at the Simeon Research Hospital. Dr. Florence Weaver is filming a video log detailing the status of a patient named Gabriel. She says Gabriel is not only growing stronger, but more malicious. Lights begin to flicker, and a security guard alerts Dr. Weaver that Gabriel got out again. A Dr. Fields says that they tried to subdue him using electroshock, but that Gabriel seemed to have absorbed the electricity. As a doctor gets violently thrown against the wall, the security guard takes out a tranquilizer gun and tries to subdue Gabriel. He sticks his entire gun barrel inside the room and gets his arm snapped in half for his idiocy. Dr. Weaver quickly grabs the gun and shoots Gabriel down like she's freaking Agent 47. We realize just how dangerous Gabriel is as we see several of the medical staff lying dead on the floor. How can someone wearing such cute socks be so evil? Oh, damn. Someone burned that thing with fire. Gabriel can broadcast his speech through a radio and says that he will kill them all. Realizing that they cannot help Gabriel, Dr. Weaver says that it's time to cut out the cancer. During the title sequence, we see some type of surgery being performed and several medical files regarding Gabriel's condition. In the present day, we meet our main character, Madison Mitchell, who is pregnant and lives with her abusive husband, Derek. Derek is a complete douche and tells Madison that she needs to stop getting pregnant. We learn that she has suffered from numerous miscarriages, possibly due to the physical abuse from Derek. During the argument, Derek slams Madison's head into the wall, causing her to bleed and she locks herself inside of the bedroom. That night, Derek is sleeping on the couch, although he really should be sleeping inside of a jail cell. He wakes up to a noise in the kitchen, and the typical horror film shenanigans begin. The ghostly entity pops up behind him and slams his head against the wall, which wakes up Madison. She hasn't received any medical attention from her injury, as we see a large blood stain left on her pillow. She walks downstairs and finds Derek's dead body, with his head seemingly snapped backwards. The ghostly entity crawls from behind his body and begins chasing Madison. She runs up to the nursery room, but the entity breaks down the door, knocking her out cold. Homicide's detectives Kakoa Moss and Regina Shaw arrive to investigate the crime, which is being called a home invasion, though there are no signs of forced entry. They are briefed by a CSI investigator named Winnie, who seems to have a crush on Kakoa. Winnie is portrayed by actress Ingrid Bisu, who is James Wan's wife. At the hospital, Madison is visited by her sister Sydney and finds out that the doctors were unable to save her baby. Detective Kakoa speaks with Sydney, where she learns of Madison's previous three miscarriages, something she wasn't aware of. Detective Shaw says the autopsy revealed the handprints on Derek's body were all backwards. They begin to suspect Madison is the killer because of their history of domestic abuse. Madison returns home from the hospital and applies deadbolts to her front and back door. She tells Sydney that she really wanted to have a baby so she could feel a biological connection to someone. She reveals that she was adopted by their parents when she was 8 and does not remember anything prior to being adopted. We then see a tour of underground Seattle being given by an unnamed woman. After the tour, the woman is captured by the unknown entity and taken to its lair. The entity reveals itself to be Gabriel when it speaks to the captive woman through an old radio. Gabriel then calls Dr. Florence Weaver over the phone and tells her that That night, while casually doing some laundry, a ghostly figure runs across the house. Lights start to flicker and Madison's head injury begins bleeding again. We then get one of the coolest moments in the film. While doing the laundry, Dr. Weaver's face appears in the washing machine. What are you doing in my house? This is my house! Who are you? 
I would have been like, yup, this is your house, take it, I'm out. Peace! Gabriel suddenly appears and begins tossing Dr. Weaver around. Madison is seemingly paralyzed and her environment around her changes and forms into the inside of Dr. Weaver's home. Madison then witnesses Gabriel brutally murdering Dr. Weaver using one of her own surgical trophies as a weapon. She wakes back up inside of her own home to the injury in the back of her head bleeding again. The detectives process the crime scene and Kakoa finds a picture of a young female patient of Dr. Weaver's from 1992 and asks one of his co-workers to aged a picture 30 years. Back in his lair, Gabriel fashions the trophy into an assassin's knife and must have a blacksmith level of 100 because that knife is looking real smooth. Madison then witnesses the brutal murder of Dr. Victor Fields, a co-worker of Dr. Weaver at the Simeon Research Hospital. Dr. Fields is sleeping like a baby in his bed, dreaming one sheep, two sheep, and then gets brutally stabbed in the face. Madison gets a close look at Gabriel, whom we see has a hideous deformed face. She informs the detectives that she witnessed Dr. Fields' murder in real time and takes them to the location of his dead body. Madison receives a call from Gabriel, who calls her by the name Emily. He says that she allowed them to tell her that he was just a figment of her imagination and that he is going to make them pay one by one. Right after leaving the station, Detective Kokoa discovers that Madison was the young girl in the photo and was a patient of Dr. Weaver, and that her real name is Emily May. Madison and Sydney go visit their mother and ask her about Gabriel. We see several creepy home videos of Madison as a kid talking to her imaginary friend named Gabriel. She is seen talking to Gabriel on a toy phone and says that she will not hurt the baby, referring to the unborn Sydney. Detective Kakoa makes the connection that all of Gabriel's targets were doctors working on Madison's case at the Simeon Hospital. He looks up the address of the remaining victim, Dr. John Gregory, hoping to prevent his murder. Madison witnesses the murder of Dr. Gregory that Detective Kakoa is unable to stop in time. She tries to warn Kakoa that Gabriel is still in the room, but she appears invisible to him. Detective Kakoa and Gabriel get into a physical brawl, and an intense chase scene ensues. Kokoa chases Gabriel to a location inside of the Seattle Underground Tour, but eventually loses sight of him. They enlist the help of a hypnotist to see if they can access Madison's repressed childhood memories for information about Gabriel. We see a flashback in which young Madison receives a call on her toy phone from Gabriel. <laughs> This is such a well-crafted and unsettling scene that proves James Wan is a true master of horror. I'm now going to have nightmares of the chatter telephone from Toy Story 3. Thanks a lot, James. Young Madison draws a knife from the kitchen, and it looks like she's about to have herself some cake. The kitchen then forms into her parents' bedroom, and Maddie finds herself holding a knife over her mother's pregnant belly, showing that Gabriel really wanted to get rid of the new baby. Present-day Madison begins screaming uncontrollably and is brought back to reality by the hypnotist. By the look on their faces, the detectives must be thinking, what the hell did I just get myself into? Back in Gabriel's lair, the woman manages to get free of her binds. She attempts to walk away and falls straight through the floor and into Madison's living room, revealing that the woman was trapped in Madison's attic the entire time. They locate the murder weapon and all of Gabriel's belongings in her attic, and Madison is once again the prime suspect. They bring her in for questioning, and Detective Shaw begins antagonizing Madison. Tell me the fucking truth! Kakoa then receives a call from Gabriel on his phone, where he reveals that he is the one responsible for everything. Sydney decides to do some investigating of her own and drives out to the now abandoned Simeon Research Hospital. She goes to the basement and finds Madison's files in the records division. This is where the film's plot twist is revealed, and this film's insanely gory final act begins. The detectives discover that the woman Gabriel captured is named Serena May and is Madison's birth mother. She became pregnant with Madison 
as a result of rape and give her baby to the Simeon Research Hospital. We learn that Gabriel is Madison's underdeveloped twin that was stuck to the back of her body since birth. Gabriel acted as a parasite and relied on Maddie's body to survive. It is explained that Gabriel gained access to a part of Maddie's brain that allowed him to make her see what he wanted her to see. Gabriel became malevolent or malignant and began telling Maddie to do all sorts of bad things on his behalf. The doctors decided to surgically remove Gabriel from Maddie in order to save her. However, the twins were conjoined at the brain and complete removal of Gabriel could have killed or severely damaged Madison. They removed what they could and suppressed the rest of Gabriel into the back of Madison's skull. Gabriel has been living in her head rent free ever since. He was the one telling Maddie to kill baby Sydney as he feared he would be replaced and forgotten once she was born. Once Sydney was born, Madison suppressed and forgot all about Gabriel. Gabriel was unleashed again when Derek slammed Madison's head into the wall. Gabriel was able to take control of Madison's body and went on a killing spree of all the doctors responsible for trying to get rid of him. Madison was able to see all the murders from her subconscious but was unaware of what was truly going on as she did not have full control of her mind or body. Gabriel has superhuman strength and is somehow able to manipulate electronics like Electro. This explains why lights flicker in his presence and how he was able to call Madison and Detective Kakoa on their cell phones. This also shows why Madison's head was always bleeding after waking up from her visions as the blood came from Gabriel opening and closing his ugly mug. There were several hints and visual clues throughout the film to show that Gabriel and Madison inhabited the same body. The first was at the very beginning of the film when the doctors are talking about Gabriel. Gabriel can be seen behind of a plastic sheet, but if we pay close attention, we can slightly make out Madison's hair in her shadow behind him. Also, I don't think those cute panda socks were Gabriel's idea. During the beginning credits, there are documents that refer to dicephalic Parapagus, which is a rare condition where an individual is born with two heads. We even see an x-ray which appears to show the two heads side by side. In the chase scene after Derek's death, the camera is made to give the illusion that Madison is being chased, although we never see anyone chasing after her. There was also no one pushing on the door which caused her to fall, although this could have been Gabriel playing mind tricks with Madison. The same thing occurs more obviously during a scene in the middle of the film when Madison is running through the house. The camera does an overhead shot focusing on Madison that I believe was specifically shot this way to show that no one was actually chasing her. In one scene, Madison can be seen staring at the crack on the wall where she she hit her head. Her shadow here seems almost alive and was in the exact same shape as the ghostly entity she encountered earlier, which was herself. Gabriel was walking around backward the entire time as his face is in the back of Madison's head. This is most clearly visible when he murders Dr. Fields and when he crawls away from Detective Kakoa. This also explains why the handprints on Derek's body appear to be backwards. Finally, and this doesn't truly count as it happens right before the actual reveal, but during a recording of Serena May giving Gabriel and Emily away, she specifically refers to the baby as them and him, as well as calling Emily by name. As bad as Gabriel is, I think it was pretty funny how he killed Derek by smashing his head into the wall, just as he did to his sister. It was like Gabriel being defensive of his twin sister in his own twisted way. Back at the police station, Madison is placed in a jail cell with whom I'm sure are a bunch of lovely ladies. Madison is the obvious oddball in the cell and they begin beating on her for no apparent reason. This unleashes Gabriel who brutally murders every single woman inside of that cell. An officer tries to stop Gabriel by shooting at him multiple times but sticks his entire arm inside of the cell like an idiot and allows Gabriel to escape. Sydney tries to call Detective Kakoa and tell him the truth about Gabriel but he is interrupted by the total chaos taking place inside of the police station. Gabriel gets a hold of his assassin's dagger from the evidence room and goes on a murder spree killing all of the officers inside of the station like he's trying to obtain a Call of Duty kill streak. <laughs> The entirety of this third act is absolutely insane, with blood and guts flying everywhere, which I didn't expect. A James Wan horror film hasn't shown this much gore since the original Saw. All the officers must be portrayed by the same actors as stormtroopers, as none of them are able to land a single hit on Gabriel. In their defense, Gabriel's also moving around like he's in the house of flying daggers or something. Kakoa calls out to Madison, who seemed completely unaware of what was going on up to that point. 
the detectives get severely injured trying to fight Gabriel, and right before he escapes, he decides to get one more good chair toss in there. Sydney heads to the hospital to speak to Madison's birth mother, but Gabriel is already there. He tells Sydney that he was saving her for last. He clearly hates Sydney because Madison chose her over him. The events are now unfolding for Madison in real time, but she is unable to gain control of her mind or body. Sydney tries to get through to Madison and tells her that Gabriel is the cause of her numerous miscarriages. He was feeding off of your fetuses to build himself back up! It appears as if Madison is regaining control of her body, but not before Gabriel shoots Sydney in the head and kills his own mother. We see that Madison now has full control and that she tricked Gabriel into thinking he killed Sydney and his mom. In reality, they are still alive and Gabriel no longer has control over Madison. She tells him that he will now be living in a world that she creates. Gabriel says that she can't keep him locked up forever and that he will return. I know, but next time, I'll be ready for you. Madison now has the same superhuman strength as Gabriel and lifts the hospital bed off Sydney. In the film's final scene, Madison embraces Sydney and tells her that she will always be her real sister. We see the shot of a light bulb making a static noise, hinting that Gabriel is still present as the movie ends. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was malignant. My friends, it was an absolute treat to see yet another James Wan original horror film on screen. This was by far his most outrageous and different film to date. The film had a very campy and cheesy feel throughout and never took itself too seriously. James Wan stated that he wanted to go back to his roots with this film and he wanted to give audiences something new. I feel like he achieved just that with Malignant, although it may not be embraced by the typical moviegoer expecting a horror movie more like Insidious or The Conjuring. I appreciated the film for what it was, although for me, it falls somewhere in the middle among James Wan's horror film resume. Overall, Malignant is a fun, cheesy, and bloody horror film that never takes itself too seriously, and I definitely recommend it to any horror fan looking for a good time. Malignant is currently playing in theaters and streaming on HBO Max, and you should check it out for yourself and form your own opinion. My friends, as always, I hope you all enjoyed the video. Thank you for tuning in, and I cannot wait to see y'all right back here in the Horror Mine. Y'all stick around.